Philippine election rivals traded allegations of dirty tricks and vote rigging today. It's the final stretch of a testy campaign before Monday's ballot. The presidential vote has shaped up into a two-way race between Lenny Robredo and Ferdinand Marcos Jr., son of a late dictator. While the Marcos name carries with it political baggage, Bernard Bernal explains what is behind this comeback. They call this Marcos country, a group of Ilocano-speaking provinces dubbed as the Solid North. Loyalists who voted the late Ferdinand Marcos Sr. and his controversial family into power. Mr. Marcos Sr. ruled the Philippines from 1965 to 86. That's when he was ousted in a peaceful revolt that restored democracy after years of his brutal military rule in the country. Monuments, symbols of this region's ode to the past, glorify the late strongman, especially here in their home province of Ilocos Norte in northern Philippines. This area in front of a structure under construction here in Ilocos region is known as the Heroes Walk, where so-called Ilocano heroes are honored with a bust. And that list includes the late former Philippine president, Ferdinand E. Marcos Sr., whose 21-year rule was marred by human rights violations and the torture of thousands of dissidents. Analysts say President Rodrigo Duterte allowing Mr. Marcos Sr.'s burial in the Hero Cemetery in Metro Manila in 2016 has legitimized this narrative of Mr. Marcos Sr. being a hero. The Marcos family has sought to rebuild an image tainted by the senior Marcos. His namesake and only son, presidential bet Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr., enjoys a comfortable lead in pre-election surveys for the May 9 national polls. This has riled up rights groups who fear a return of authoritarian and corrupt leadership under the sun. This monument of heroes in Metro Manila shows names of martyrs who fought against the dictatorship of Mr. Marcos Sr., whose family has been documented to have amassed from the Philippine government an estimated 5 to 10 billion U.S. dollars in ill-gotten wealth. But here in Ilocos Norte, schools, stadiums, and even the local Justice Department building are named after the Marcoses who continue to dominate local politics here. Mr. Marcos Jr. is running on a pledge to unite Filipinos. Mirroring his father's mannerisms, campaign jingle, and even the campaign slogan of making this nation great again. So I think at the heart of Marcos Jr.'s appeal for unity is an appeal to people's visceral dislike for antagonistic politics. It appeals to a form of nationalism that is not humble, but it's a form of nationalism that really elevates the Filipino as a special kind of people in the world, emphasizing the grand infrastructure projects, foregrounding the so-called achievements of the father. Mr. Marcos Sr. imposed martial law on the Philippines in 1972, supposedly to counter communism. Thousands were arrested, tortured, and killed. The martial law era is one of the darkest chapters in Philippine history. But there are many who believe in Mr. Marcos Sr.'s ability to provide stability and security, and that his son would do the same. I mean, Kahit hindi pa ako pinapanganak nung time na yon, and alam ko na si, na si Bongbong, um, no, si Ferdinand Marcos, uh, President Ferdinand Marcos that time is on purpose naman talaga na in-implement niya yung mga ganun. Tsaka hindi naman niya yun gagawin kung hindi siya, ay hindi kinakailangan. Yung nakikita ko yung kung papa, nakita ko nga na kaya niyang gawin, kung anong kaya gawin ng tatay niya. Tsaka makikita mo naman sa mga speech niya, di ba? Puro unity, puro gusto niya, gusto niya walang kaaway, gusto niya pagkakaisa. Over 11,000 human rights victims during martial law were declared eligible by a local claims board for reparations from recovered stolen assets of the Marcoses. But they represent only 14% of claimants.
Like thousands of victims, Raisa Salvador's father was arrested without warrant and tortured during martial law. Growing up here in Ilogos Norte, she felt like an outcast. Their family's experience invalidated. What struck me most is the experience of my grandparents. They suffered whatever pain that my father is also suffering. There's a father and a mother grieving for a lost son. If you subscribe to such um, thinking na walang nangyaring ganon, swerte ka. Because it means that you never have to experience that or you, or you don't have anyone, you don't know anyone who experienced that. So they are lucky. Her father has carefully documented those tortured and illegally detained in Ilocos Norte from 1984 to 1986 under the then governorship of Marcos Jr. Accountability is the main reason why we should always remember and never forget. There are people who died. Millions were stolen from us. I don't think that's fair. I don't think we should move on. While the Marcos family is now appealing for unity, they have not apologized for martial law atrocities during which they enjoyed a lavish lifestyle. Anti-Marcos voters here admit they are a tiny minority in the so-called Marcos country. And for that tiny minority here, there can be no unity without justice. Buena Bernal, CNA, Ilocos Norte.